Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. We ready. About as ready as we gonna be this morning. Yep. Hey, 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 hey. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, it does feel like a Monday because it is. Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. Monday, August 8th, 2022. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Wake up, y'all. Time to get your body moving. This thing on? <laughs> Man, just barely this morning. Hey, hey, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Going down. First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. Paul B, buddy to God. Ooh, man, it's a rough one. Indeed, tired, boss. Boss, he tired. Ron's review says he's heading to Manning, Iowa today. Okay, you on the road again? What's going on? What's going on? Facebook user gives us a good morning. Let's see who that is. Probably on friends the first guy, Omaha. <clears throat> Ooh, man, it's a, it's a rough morning for us, y'all. <clears throat> How y'all feeling this Monday, August 8th, 2022? Let us know. Ooh. Trying to make it happen. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Judy Prinzler gives us a good morning over there on Friends of First Sky Omaha. How you doing, Judy Prinzler? Rome's Review says 134 subscribers. We inching on up. Appreciate that. Over on YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wanda Lewis gives us a good morning. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Also, uh, good morning, fam. Who's that from? That's Judy Prinzler giving us a good morning, fam. And uh, uh, Michelle Moreno gave us, gave us a good morning on Friends of. Appreciate you. Hey, hey. Josh Tate says good morning friends It's Monday but we got this <clears throat> I hope you're right Josh I hope you're right Man We hope and wish That you're right I'm still uh, live from the Covoids So um, Yeah man Sticking around sticking around I thought I'd be over by now but mm. Oof. Get well soon Thanks, bro. Uh, yeah, let us know how you doing. Good morning to y'all. Uh, we this is Monday, August eighth, two thousand twenty-two. We we gonna jump. Oh, look at <clears throat> Big Bro in the house. What's going on, brother Livkins? Groove and Grover Livkins in the house. That's my phone. Hey, hey. Right there, bro. tell me what you think. Uh. Be trying to learn. Be trying to play guitar like Grover. Put the stank on it. <clears throat> anyway, good morning. Uh, radio, the radio clan over here on the uh, firstskyomaha.com. Hit the live button. Appreciate you listening in over there. Once again, forgot to hit the button on the mix. I don't know what that is, but I uh, hope you were grooving along anyway. Got some new tracks up there uh, from uh, what's that group that we missed? Uh, JD Beck and uh, oh, Dami and JD Beck, Dami and JD Beck, yeah, yeah, we put some Dami and JD Beck on up, up on there for the Black Classical Sundays yesterday. Man, yeah, that new album, man. <sighs> albums off the chain, man, for real, for real. Whew. Well, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm gonna just keep on uh, welcoming, welcome you into the house when you come on yeah. in and say hello to us. Thanks for getting up so early in the morning with us. Also, if you're on Facebook, please do us a favor. Share the show. Share the show on your page so we can get as many people talking as we can. Chelsea gives us a happy Monday. What's happening? What's happening? Our brother Muhammad in the house. Assalamu alaikum, family and friends. Hey, alaikum salam, brother. That's what's up. 
Von Chapman gives us a good morning. Looks like he's over there on fa- on uh, Friends of Facebook as well. You guys been dropping some good stuff in Friends of First Sky Omaha. Friends of First Sky Omaha, not Friends of Facebook. Friends of First Sky <laughs> Omaha. Yeah, yeah. The Facebook page. And uh, appreciate that. That's where we're going to get a lot of the things that we talk about these days because you guys keep dropping uh, very interesting questions this time, too. Not even articles, but like Beth Davis Wilson dropped a very important question in the chat that I thought was, was super cool. We'll get to that. Um, but, uh, yeah, lots of good conversations going on there. We appreciate that. Appreciate you. Thanks for joining us. Uh, once yeah. again, this is first sky Omaha radio, first sky Omaha in the morning, in the morning, I'll be buddy to God. And, uh, all of you, the chat chimers, uh, shout out to star Trek rich and the Weberized crew who continue to share the page for us. And, and, uh, and also just part of the squad. So, so that's what's up. Squad. Uh, good morning, Miss E. Appreciate you jumping in as well. Thank you very much, Erica Fell. Uh, she brought me over some some soup, the other, some uh, curry the other day. And that really, okay. yeah, man. I was like, I need that 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 number five. I need the hot on it. Try to burn some of this out. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it was good. Pop says having technical issues, so we'll say good morning to all again. Okay, so we missed Pops earlier. Well, good morning to you, Pops. Appreciate you very much for tuning in. Sorry that you're having some difficulties there. Uh, we definitely have some difficulties over here called Monday. Oh, man. Man. Yeah. Definitely a case of the Mondays going on today. A little, little tired. A little, little tech acting a little funny. Yeah, man. It's always something. But, uh, anybody have a, have a go out this weekend at all? Anybody do anything yeah. fun? Um, de- le- definitely let us hear about it. I uh, know that there was the pull up and vibe that happened over the weekend that uh, everybody seemed to have a good time at. So uh, there was an article, and I think Channel 3 did a news piece on it, saying yep. that it braved the 100-degree weather to come out and pull up and vibe. So that's what's up. Shout out to Kieran Marshall for putting that on. Yeah. Also, Anjali Mitchell from uh, Anjali and Timeless, one of the, one of our, one of, one of the doper uh, R&B bands that we got out here. Uh, she got married this weekend. Man. so. Shout out to Anjali Mitchell and Jasmine, aka the Honeys, as uh, as people are calling them. So uh, lots of good stuff going on. Seems like this weekend. Let us know. Did you make any of it? Uh, did you uh, do what? Did you do anything different? Did you lay low like me? I did some man yeah. laying low this weekend. It's a good time for that, especially with these uh, triple degree days. Man, it's supposed to cool man. off. It's yeah, cool. I, I did see that. I did see that. Uh, it is supposed to cool off here pretty soon. So yeah, you know, just stay safe out there. Of course, as always, check on your your loved ones, your pets, beasts of the field, as we like to call them around here. Yeah, man, the older ones as well. You know, can't be sitting in hundred degree weather in the house like that. So yeah, man. Yeah, man. So definitely, uh, keep it cool out there. And uh, yeah, let us know. Let your mind be free. Let your voice be heard. Chime into the chat. Big shout out to all the ghost listeners out there as well we yes. appreciate you we love you we thank you um as usual we will have uh, on mondays our our media guests but uh the, the usual group isn't, isn't coming through today uh, we will, today we, no. yeah we will be having a special guest coming up a little later on though uh yeah looking forward to this oh, conversation yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, y'all yeah. already got wind of the what's happening with the whiz coming up so i, I can't wait to talk to we got a special guest jay rogers in the house the House of Afro Capes and Curls. Yes, the Extraordinary teamed, League of Negroes. Teamed up with First Sky Omaha on, a, on an event coming up. So just tell y'all right now, get your costumes ready. In the meantime, buddy, let me ask you. What's how up? Was week, how was your weekend? How are you doing? Man, I'm tired. My weekend was busy, busy, busy. But uh, I'm I'm happy. Good, I'm happy. Good stuff, though. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, man, on Saturday, I actually uh got the privilege of joining a production for a Fox Soul TV show, which was pretty interesting. So, That's what's up. yeah, 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 getting into the media, um, media aspect of, of things down here in Atlanta. Again, this is kind of the black media mecca, if you if you will, you know. Uh, so definitely, definitely uh, excited about that and some of the opportunities that might come from that. Um, and then also, um. Kind of mad I miss Invest Fest over the weekend. You know, Follow the Money is uh is the theme of this season. Would have loved to gone there and made some connections and maybe even, you know, got some content. But um man, 
kudos kudos to, to to those brothers man rashad and troy uh the two founders and creators and hosts of um earn your leisure uh possibly if i'm not mistaken the top financial literacy podcast uh in the world if not uh, in the country highly um, encourage you to check that out that's the one we yeah out. yeah if you haven't please please it's a whole network uh, of uh, information is very very valuable information and they, they cover a, a whole wider range of topics from entrepreneurship to uh, real estate investing cryptocurrency um man yeah yeah just 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 check them out but this weekend was definitely huge definitely huge i did see some of the videos some of the recaps um of course they had media moguls man giants giants in the game tyler perry wow and uh steve harvey uh, were kind of the keynote speakers and you had you know the likes of rick ross the boss coming out you know you know so it was a lot of just uh, a lot of excellence and, and uh, the turnout a lot of people you know dying and, and really hungry for the knowledge and for the information man so um it was yeah, like yeah, fifteen thousand people or something like that showed up. Man, I mean the crowds, the crowds. You know, I had you know you kind of look at those types of pictures and it's like ah, monkey pox. Ah, right, right, right. Yeah, Ooh. but but yeah, the the just just to see those two brothers, man, build such a platform and have you know this this kind of culmination uh, of their platform and yeah, it's, one is inspiring just you know for what we do, uh, you know, Paul, but. Also, just uh, to see the community, you know what I mean? To see the culture, if you will, uh, push it forward and getting more into um, entrepreneurship. And, and uh, actually, we'll get into this here in a little bit. Uh, but there are some people who are, you know, awarded in the Omaha area for their entrepreneurship. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, definitely big shout out to everyone involved with the Pitch Black uh, event that, that went down. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be talking about that here. In a little bit, lots of good um, stuff going on, man, for sure. Um, it, it definitely inspired uh, me to to get our plans back together to do an annual event where we can have everybody kind of come out and have some entertainment, some uh, some of the topics that we talk about, and you know the chat chimers kick back all the good stuff that we we had planned on doing, and hopefully we can get to that, man. Um, you know, it's always something with with these health scares out here <laughs> on putting something together but man at the same time i mean you know uh, we at least can do some virtual things uh, uh you know that, that that might help too so we're looking at trying to do a, a bunch of stuff but that that uh, earn your leisure uh, invest fest this weekend really inspired me as well uh other people that did things this weekend it looks like uh, miss e says enjoying family in the house COVID and hell heat outside. My son stopped by and I beat him at Domino's last night. Okay. Okay. Little bones. Little 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 child abuse going on last <laughs> night. Uh, Rome's review says I cleaned up my garage and making a donation to the Bryant Center of gently used sports equipment this weekend. I'm glad you brought up the Bryant Center. I'm glad you did that. Uh, Brother Terrence Hayes put out a call to uh, to br- get some water for the Bryant Center. They said they need water, bottled bottled water out there. So he brought a couple cases over, and he's challenging all of us to bring a couple cases over there as well. So. Uh, that's something that I uh, just saw on Friends of First Sky Omaha. He put out on Friends of First Sky Omaha. If you have access to, uh, you know, a couple packs of bottled water, take it over to the Bryant Center. And uh, and I guess uh, they, they need, they're in need of it right now. So probably always in need of it right now, especially with these hot days. And all oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, weekend coming up. Uh, so, yeah. And uh, Leia Keister gives us a good, mor- good Monday morning. Good mo- Monday morning to you, too. It's, it's feeling like a Monday to us in a big way. Uh, let's talk, talk about some of the things that we're going to talk about today let's get into yeah it. definitely a few topics to get into as i mentioned we will be uh, diving into the black uh the pitch black event that went on uh, over the weekend uh, also uh the conversation kind of kicked off on friends of first sky omaha already so big big shout out to everyone involved with that of uh, brother von chapman beth davis wilson uh i think even brianna full got in on the conversation uh talking about these um the affordable housing projects that's coming up uh recent georgia row apartment project uh, it was uh, announced big shout out to channel three for breaking this news but uh yeah we'll talk about this project continue our conversation uh, again this has been something that's uh been a hot topic for us over the last year uh so really continuing our con- well, really more than the last year but continuing our conversation on affordable housing also front porch investments are recent received a, a large lump sum they got a bag if you will uh for more affordable housing so there's money out there uh but again we're going to talk about how it's being used and where it's going and uh, of course 
who's it going to affect? And uh, as always, looking for solutions. So if you got some ideas, let your mind be free. Let your voice be heard on that. Uh, also, some inflation things going on coming out of D.C., uh, a new bill, uh, health care tax and climate bill. Speaking of these 100, do- 100 uh, degree days, uh, we'll definitely dive into that and, and exactly uh, how that might help. Uh, again, uh, so on, on the ground floor, how, how is that going to help our pockets? Uh, because that's the ultimate question of the season. We're following the money and really uh, trying to get specific about how we're combating poverty in our communities. So, uh, again, uh, we'll talk about that and more. Of course, we will have a guest coming up a little later on. So look out for that. In the meantime, in between time, Paul, what are we doing? Let's get it rolling. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Once again, you're listening to First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. Paul B., buddy to God. All of you, the chat chimers, all of you, the ghost listeners, and everybody that comes back a little later on in the day to watch the entire show. So just remember, you can always go back to uh, uh, Facebook or YouTube where we are live and check it out again. We're also live on Twitter as well, if that is more your fancy. Uh, there's a lot of people I'm seeing a growing number on YouTube. So I appreciate that. Like and subscribe over there. If you're still on Facebook, do us a favor, share the show on Facebook while you're watching, uh, so that other people can uh, jump in as well. That would really help. It is Monday, August the 8th, 2022. Um, I, if, for those of you that have reached out to me over, uh, being sick, I really, really appreciate that. Feel very loved. A lot of people are reaching out and saying, hey, I'll bring my some food and so on and so forth. So shout out to Brother Muhammad. Shout out to Miss Erica Felt. Shout out to everybody who has uh, offered and in, in, uh, in, uh, brought over some things here. I'm kind of isolated here because I caught COVID last week. Uh, and it's kind of kicking my butt a little bit. I thought that I'd be, yeah. uh, oh, I thought I was over the worst of it, but still lingering on a little bit. So I'm uh, kind of rallying to do the show and then I will absolutely be taking a nap after this. And uh, just kind of keeping on with the with the uh, the medications and the in the in the you know just kind of chilling out on certain things I'm eating, uh, just trying to do everything I can do to try to get better, and uh, that's all we can really do right now. So just keep an eye on it. But I just wanted to give a shout out to everybody who uh, reached out and said they would help. So I really really appreciate that. Got a lot of good friends around here. So yeah, that's- man. Nevertheless, we're here today because uh, it is still very, very important that we have these conversations and uh, look forward to talking to you all and seeing what you guys think about a lot of things, man, really shapes what it is that we do next with even our own personal lives to uh, have these conversations. So thank you again. Appreciate everybody who is a reoccurring member of the channel as well. Uh, those those payments that come in, uh, we got $10 people, $25 people, $50 people a month, and it really helps monthly to, to keep this thing rolling keep the tech up and everything that we need to keep on having these conversations. And trust me, people are listening to these conversations in a big, big way. So uh, thank you very much for that. And uh, we'll continue to, to, to do this as long as we can. Good morning, Brianna full with some sunshine. Appreciate that. Hey, let and, it in. Uh, in the meantime, between time, buddy, let's jump into something real quick. Yeah, man, let's uh, kick off with uh, the first rounds of investments coming out of um, the pitch black actually, which is a yearly event. And that happens is hosted by the Midland African Amer- or Midland African Chamber of Commerce, excuse me. And this event was created, of course, for opportunities for a so-called Black entrepreneurs uh, in Nebraska. Um, and uh, a couple couple of friends of the show actually uh, got got uh, awarded. Uh, shout out to, to Nina Soji, who's with Okra African Grill. I know we love us uh, some Okra African Grill, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good food. Uh, she go she actually took home. Man, man. I actually took home the top prize uh, this year and will receive a $10,000 award. Uh, also, Same second, man. yep, yep. Second place went to uh, Robert uh, Ekpai of Top Kiffer Incorporated, who won 5000 
Uh, also, big, big shout out to Monty Murray of Idle Vital Living. Uh, she won twenty five hundred dollars uh, as well as Investor's Choice, uh, who won five thousand um, dollars. Also, there's a, a Meraki Monastery, which I have not heard of, but sounds very interesting. Uh, they won a thousand dollars. And then also finally Voyage uh, won a thousand dollars as well. Uh, as we know, not not too big of a uh, investment, not too big of a lump sum uh, as far as business goes, but um still still nice to see again the um midland african chamber of commerce pulling together to you know do some things and, and you know some of these businesses that won definitely a big shout out to idol vital uh just been kind of personally watched that business grow and uh, we got to talk to her man uh imani has been making some waves uh was what has really caught my interest in how she's run her business and kind of her business model is the collaborations and, and yeah. Uh, some of the joint joint you know products that she's come out with and how she's been able to get you know the name of her business moving around the city very very interesting so it's always nice to see her uh win in, in any shape or form man i gotta tell you man on the on them hot days if i'm down that way i'm stopping through bro I don't care man man I, I still have not have not been able to, to, to you know get get a piece i mean of course um when they had when she had drinks at best burger you know i used to yeah. indulge, uh but i have not been able to go to to the actual you know site the actual location that she has so um yeah yeah next time i'm in I'm Omaha, I'm gonna check it out yeah man the smoothies and, and, and nothing to play with when it's on a hot day and nothing nothing that can be more refreshing than that so uh, that's one of my definitely one of my favorite places. Um, shout out to to the chamber too. I, I actually yeah. met a rep, rep, representative from the chamber at an event recently, and uh, definitely looking at trying to uh, be be a part of that. She she actually asked if we would like to join, and uh, I was like, yeah, let's. I'm I'm definitely down for that. Let's see what's happening. So shout out to them. I know that it's always a struggle to raise funds. It's a struggle to do anything in, in a, uh if you're if you're an organization of color that way or in this state. Mm. Uh, so shout out to them for even having funds to be able to award people like that, and uh, and I'm and then you'll you'll definitely see some collaborations between First Sky Omaha and uh, in the in the African Chamber there in the future for sure. So uh, and other and other other connections too. Other other people we're we're getting a whole lot of people to try to sign up here and, and be a part of of that that organization. They're doing a lot for business in the area. So uh, shout out to them. That's what's up. Good news. Starting out with some good news on a Monday. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I tried to. I tried to. And, you know, uh, again, we're all about following the money in this season and um, looking at, you know, what opportunities are out there for entrepreneurs, what opportunities are out there, especially for, um, you know, quote unquote, black and brown businesses. Uh, so definitely, uh, again, tap in with the Midland African Chamber of Commerce. Uh, also, big shout out to Vice President of Strategic Planning uh, with the Chamber, Marco LaRock, uh, who said it's really important for black and brown businesses uh, get the support they need, you know, in terms of establishing and growing their businesses. Uh, access to capital sometimes can be a challenge when they talk to banks, you know, or like raising funds. Uh, so this is a great way for those black and brown businesses to excel, not just the money, but also get the support that they need. And a lot of times uh, when we as, you know, just people in the community try to go into business, um, we don't really take in consideration. There are a lot of uh, associations. There are a lot of organizations, you know, um, industry organizations that you can join. Um, it kind of seems like a lot of us join, you know, going to business and just kind of be by ourselves, you know, fend for ourselves. Yeah. Uh, but you know, there's all types of organizations and support and just uh, information out there. So please, please educate yourselves and uh, yeah, tap in with the chamber, man. It seems like they're doing the good work. That's what we're doing. We one of them businesses. We start, we we just went into business. So now it's like time to start looking into some of these chambers and get some yeah, yeah, yeah. help. Uh, at least the, the direction, the direction that you can you can gain and uh in order to you know scale and do everything you need to do in your business. So I'm I'm, I'm all for it. Uh speaking of businesses, real quick, uh, I put out a post a couple of weeks ago that was like it was like a red what well, it was a uh, ribbon cutting season because there was a lot of uh, businesses that opened up shout out to noise opening up their new spot shout out to uh stable gray for opening up their spot on on uh 24th street mm -hmm. and uh and uh, what i didn't do was was give a shout out to sunita budai who is a uh, avid listener and a, and a friend of first guy omaha she did a ribbon cutting for her bright and her future uh uh, uh organization over there too so just wanted to oh, give man. a shout out to her uh while we're talking about business and businesses opening and all that good stuff so uh 
Yeah, man. Uh, if you, I know that there's people that are in Friends of First Sky Omaha that's donated to her cause. Uh, she she's uh, started this thing from scratch. It's basically a, a, a child care center, and not just a child care center, but a, in but a, a school. You know, mm. there's education involved with her child care situation over there, and it's very affordable. And as a matter of fact, uh, the model is, is is on a sliding scale. So a lot of people who wouldn't be able to afford such high high uh, quality care. Uh, are able to because she because of this model that she's doing and she she always needs donations as well because that's how she supplements that stuff but uh you know it's all about you know paying your people well and uh taking care of the kids and having the facility to be able to take care of the kids but also having something affordable for people in the community to be able to to um get down with so shout out to her shout out to the new facility and uh and her ribbon cutting I wish I, I wish I could have made that one as well, but I didn't get a, get a chance to. But shout out to Sunita Budai for that. Brighten our futures. Check them out, man. Uh, definitely, uh, we watched that model start and, and come to fruition over the course of this year. So uh, shout out to her for real, man. Congrats, congrats, indeed. And uh, man, uh, those are the types of stories that I would love to to showcase and spotlight more uh, here on the show, especially throughout uh, this season. So we might have to bring her on. And uh, interviewer, and uh, you know, uh, definitely got to bring on Imani. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll work on those things. Uh, but big shout outs to you know all the entrepreneurs. I know there's several business owners that are in the chat right now, uh, making waves and finding success. So uh, yeah, 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 big big shout out to everyone making it happen, man. Uh, also, kind of moving forward, speaking of people making it happen, and I know there's going to be some people that have uh, some comments on this uh, front porch investments. They also recently received a, a large lump sum of funds uh, a bag if you will uh to the tune of 40 million dollars or 20 million of which uh comes through investments of the american rescue plan act or arpa funds uh, which are being matched uh, by front porch investments uh through 20 million dollars uh, that they receive through philanthropic contributions mm-hmm. uh, the development and preservation fund which is uh the name uh, of this project will award funding to projects serving households earning less than 120 percent of the area median income so again uh any joint household i believe they're taking uh in consideration the full or actual amount uh, of uh individuals who live in the household uh, to come up with this number but again these are are the uh, metrics that they're using to to gauge what is uh affordable or how you can afford this thing or how you qualify uh for this housing uh, again it's uh for households earning less than 120 percent of the area median income so you know pull out your calculators to figure out if uh you qualify yeah a uh, shout out to brianna fool for putting this in friends of first sky omaha there was definitely some discussion there uh, yeah. within the chat and uh uh what were some of the do you remember what some of the the the, the issues and the questions were uh in, in part of those discussions there because well I'm, um in most part, big shout out to Beth Davis Wilson uh, for dropping this question. Oh, right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, which kind of sparked the chat, which is uh, kind of the our favorite function, if you will, of first friends of first guy Omaha. Uh, you know, you always feel free to ask a question or drop some information in the uh, group, and you know, we we try to see what conversation comes out of it. Uh, but Beth Davis Wilson, Beth Davis Wilson, excuse me, asks, um. We wondered if when a project promoting affordable housing changes hands before the TIF terms are completed, do the new owners have to follow the terms of the original proposal uh, that ensured the TIF funding or do they begin paying property taxes as do their neighbors? Anyone know? Again, kind of referencing to the conversation we had on Friday about some of these affordable housing projects that recently received a TIF financing, uh, specifically the one on 30th. And the question that was presented on, you know, whether or not what what happens uh, if uh, this property changes management companies, uh, which we see a lot of times with apartments where a new management company comes in. And next thing you know, you can't get anything fixed. Rent is going up. Uh, you know, just everything changes seemingly overnight. And is that a possibility with these TIF uh, projects uh, to which uh, Brother Vaughn Chapman and uh, Brianna Full kind of chimed in uh, on the conversation? Uh, and uh, basically, Brother Vaughn Chapman is kind of alluding to uh, the fact that it depends on these contracts or some of these covenants. But uh, if is, it is possible that, um, you know, if some of these property managers um, aren't beholden to the previous contract, then they might not be required to maintain certain levels 
uh, of rent. Yeah, they might be able to raise that if they will. Uh, but again, let your mind be free. Let your voice be heard. Chime into the chat if you have any answers to that question or any thoughts on on, um, on that topic. So the question. So then that means they, they're they're still getting they're still benefit benefiting from the TIF that was assigned to that project in the first place, but they don't have to they don't have to uh, stick with any of the requirements requirements that yeah right. Wanda Lewis says uh, the new company will have to assume the previous agreement. Okay, that, mm -hmm. I mean that makes sense. They have to assume the previous agreement. Okay, so they so they have to. Uh, looking so looking at the the end of uh, Brother Chapman's comment on the on the page, he says, uh, "In government or subsidized housing, rents could be fixed for an indeterminate amount of time. However, in the private sector, you're at the mercy of the rental market driven up by the rental property owners. The, when Omaha tore down the Spencer Street subsidy subsidized homes, uh, the phasing out of Section Eight, and without rental caps, the future for a mass majority is unaffordable. So, um." So, so, yeah, this is something I want to look into a little bit further. Wanda Lewis is saying uh, the new company will have to assume the previous agreement, which I hope means if it's uh you know if they if they have a there's a cap on their on the rent that that they have to keep that in order for them to continue to to have TIF benefits. Has, has anybody ever heard of TIF being taken away, or can TIF be taken away if 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 it changes owners? I got a lot of questions here about this this particular situation because we got a lot of buildings and stuff that are about to be popping up. She says that includes TIF and OHA. Okay, a lot of a uh, lot of uh, projects that are popping up, especially with this ARPA these ARPA funds coming in, mm -hmm. where there's a bunch of you know of quote unquote developing affordable housing situations. But yeah, that's a good question. Can people get in there, get TIF money for that stuff? Come back and and, uh, and and change all the terms. Uh, Miss Miss Erica Fell says they're private business. When my landlord was selling the house, although I had a year left on my two year lease, the new buyer could evict me or change the terms of my lease. I believe these properties were built with public funds, but the new buyer may not be held to it. Okay, so not sure about that. Not sure about that. Like Wanda Lewis, Wanda Lewis is saying that the new company has to assume the previous agreement. So. Um. So yeah, so, so something more to look into here for sure, and and also I, I if Beth Davis Wilson is listening too, um, shout out for for sending in that question. Was there is there any project that you witnessed or that you you're wondering about that, that is, or seeing this trying to do that or is this just a question that came up, um, just on your own? Uh, because that because if there's some projects that's happening. That looks like it might change hands, then it'd be something to keep our eye on. So anyway, yeah, just just questions yeah. out there that I'm putting out there to the chat and the ghost listeners, everybody listening. Um, she says, "Where can we find out so we can have a source to cite?" Yeah, good question, good question, Miss E. Um, I'm currently uh, looking at the City of Omaha Planning Department website. They have TIF policies. They have a, uh, they have some information on TIF. Um. Mm -hmm. So maybe, you know, kind of combing through this, you can find some answers to these questions. Yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, that's just this is just a, a follow the money type of question. They're just trying to figure out exactly what, what it means if that happens. Uh, and if that's happening, if that's that my, my question more so is, is that happening somewhere? Have you seen that anywhere? If anybody in the chat has seen that, let us know. Uh, but there's there's a lot to it. There's a lot of money coming in. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, we got a story a little later on about that Georgia Row Apartments, and yeah. I, believe, I believe they're getting some funding as well. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that we got to kind of keep our eye on when this stuff happens, man. Because they're you know they're here we are. They know affordable housing is a tough thing out for us out here. Um, they're saying that they're doing these putting things together in order for us to be able to have some more affordable housing here and there. Um, so so how is that working? Because I certainly don't want buildings and things creeping in under this affordable housing situation that the, the rents creep up to unaffordableness or they come in that way in the first place because that's what's, that's what's been happening too. They've been right. coming that way in the first place. They just come on in, you know, 
with the notion we had we re- we reported that 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 uh, outside company that was building apartment complexes in Omaha and, and whose sole strategy was to make it unaffordable so people had and, to, yeah so and buying buying houses you know and, and buying people out out of their homes so uh, definitely things to look out for um and but I also do want to round back to this front porch article because this is an opportunity. Uh, for people to apply for some funds uh, to, to kind of not only build new housing, but uh, something that's been brought up a lot of times during this conversation is rehabbing houses that already exist, uh, which uh, this first round there, there will be a round of applications available coming August or uh, yeah, August 15th. Uh, that will be actually available between August 15th and September 13th. So uh, a few weeks to apply for this. Uh, but um, it's about the first round will include $15 million of ARPA funding uh, distributed in low interest loans for affordable or mixed income housing development or rehabilitation with a maximum loan term of 24 months. All loans will be available at a 1% fixed rate interest. So very, very low uh, interest. Uh, but the loan types include pre-development loans, acquisition loans, construction loans and bridge loans. Uh, so, again, if you are interested in uh, rehabbing a house, if you're uh, looking at a home that you'd like to rehab or uh, if you are in a situation or a position to develop housing, uh, again, there are funds available through Front Porch uh, Investments. Uh, again, that application round is open between August 15th and September 13th. Uh, you can go to Front Porch Investments org. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and um, drop this link in the chat. Mm-hmm. Wanda Lewis in the chat says it might be different for raising the cost for the tenants. However, they cannot have an increase without warning. She says, I know someone that recently sold their apartment building and uh, they had to find someone that was willing to abide by the terms of the contract with TIFF and OHA. Okay. So uh, that, that sounds, sounds like it's answered there. Uh, somebody has to abide by that. Uh, but yeah, but like you, but like you said, after that, it, it might be different for raising the cost for the rent for the tenants, which is, you know, that's that's what we're looking at right now. Can they come in and raise right. the cost on you? Uh, not uh, Miss Erica Fells, like they can not only raise the cost, they can evict you if they want to. You know, it's it's um, you know, it's it it it, it it's uh, kind of troubling when you think about like um, what could happen that way. I mean, I see a lot of strategies happen in that way where they come in and one company will come in and, and do something. Another company come in and take it over. You know, that kind of stuff can happen all the time. So, uh, you, it, you know, something to keep your eye on for sure. I, I just think that, that, uh, I, I just hope that the, the ARPA funds aren't going to get abused this way with us still sitting here talking about what is affordable housing. Yeah. And that's, that's kind of, the the gist uh, of this conversation always is like, I just get the sense that this is a, a buzzword that's being used. And, well, everybody has different definitions of it, which is the problem. Like, you know, most of these developers are acting like a thousand dollars for a one bedroom is affordable because it's not a house where you're paying twenty five hundred a month or something like that. Like, I yeah, and. You got the what one one definition that we've heard is thirty percent of your income, which again, if following that definition, where there's not enough income to make it, um, and then now this hundred twenty percent of area median income, I'm not sure exactly what uh, dollar amount threshold that is. Um, so yeah, yeah, exactly what is affordable? How are they defining this? It's, it's just a buzzword. It seems like to, to move some of this money around because it, I get the sense at the end of the day, the people who you would think that this is going to impact or help. It's not going to. Yeah. Um, it seems like that needs to be figured out before they start throwing money at that definition. That's just me. Not sure. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's take a quick break at seven 40. If you believe in the concept of time, you're listening to First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. Paul B, buddy to God. Star, no, Star Trek Rich is not here, but Star Trek Rich is here in spirit. Squad. Oh, boys. <laughs> Part of the squad. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Once again, don't you touch nothing. Stay tuned.
shout out to Miss Erica Felt with the sales pitch. Appreciate that. That's right. <laughs> if you pay for a channel, pay for ours. FirstSkyOmaha.com. Hit the donate button to become a reoccurring member of the channel. And uh, welcome back. You're listening to First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. All be buddy to God. All of you, the chat chimers. Matter of fact, you guys are chiming in in a big way right now. We got Brianna Full in the house. She says, uh, if you are, if you or someone you know is interested in developing residential commercial areas in North and South Omaha, you can sign up for, Lord, it's coming on in hot. Sign up for uh, Sparks Developer Sparks Academy. Developer Academy. There you go. Applications are closing soon. Uh, check out their social media for more info. They also help with f- financing and at the end of the academy. Okay. Ms. E says, uh, air, area median income is being drastically altered with gentrification. High income living right next door to below poverty still raises prices too far above affordable for the pre-existing community. Yeah, I think we all feel that way in a very strong way. Von Chapman says, uh, they figured it out. Nothing about building so-called affordable housing has anything to with to do with addressing poverty in in a city that can't afford to pay attention. Mm. Uh, uh, Wanda Lewis says situations can change with income based housing all the time, such as if you get a raise on your job if, in if one of your children are working and they turn 18. At that point, you may not qualify for housing anymore. Oh, on that level. Yeah. Yeah, good, good. Whew, yeah. Interesting stuff for sure. Um, didn't even think about that on the on the sliding scale stuff they got going on, like over at the over at the Highlander, for instance. Uh, any of your situation changes at all can go down like that. So that's that's interesting. Which is, which is what I was trying to get get at, you know, before we went to break. Like, I'll be honest, man. Like we're talking about it right now, but I don't feel like we're having the conversation. You know what I mean? Like I don't feel like yeah. we really got, and that's that's one of the things I do appreciate about this show is you know we we get these stories, we we touch on these topics, and this is literally us figuring it out together in real time and and i just don't get the sense that we're having the conversation and i appreciate uh sister wanda lewis for you know bringing that point to our attention like this it's a poverty trap man that's it's a poverty trap even even if you can find your way to to get into this so-called affordable housing whatever these politicians you know are uh are envisioning in their head when they're using this or uh, however, the politics of this works, you know what I mean? As far as there's this buzzword, there's some kind of arbitrary definition, and then there's a whole heap of funds that are tied to this. And if you can figure out a way to fit your project in this definition, then you get the funds. But how do we alleviate poverty? That's the question that I want to answer. And this just feels like a poverty trap, like Sister Wanda Lewis said. You know, if you if you actually get into a position where um and, and it's funny because the threshold is so low. Like we're talking about, you know, this uh, hundred and so million dollars in ARPA funds that's still, you know, sitting for people that are uh, that do need rental assistance that are in the house, um, and aren't getting access to that those funds. Yeah, yeah. It's like you got to make a hundred dollars a week in order to to <laughs> you know in order to to actually qualify for some of this stuff. And then once you actually do start making a little money, maybe not enough uh, to actually survive, but you get disqualified or you have to, you know, move. Um, that, that's very interesting, man. Like, how can we just get people making decent money that can just go out and afford the stuff themselves and really don't need these projects? Like, that's that's the question. How can we get people making actual money where we don't need all of these programs and projects and things well like that. I, I look at it like i'm glad that the programs and projects are there because there's there's some certain times in people's life that they do need it but there needs to be some kind of uh softer offloading in in you know on on the projects um, i guess that's what we're missing upward mobility where where is the avenue for upward mobility yes yeah, instead of the project instead of those programs being there to to for for you to just depend on they need to they need to add an element of uh we're gonna help you get on your feet and get up and out of the situation more than um just you know uh right 
because there's a big gap between like there's a big gap between if you really need these programs and you're really in dire straits, then you're you're really hurting. And there's too big of a gap from you really hurting to you really getting on your feet. Uh, and they let you off. They drop you off the cliff before you get to that other side. There ain't no right. bridge. Exactly. Yeah. It just the I'll be honest when we're when and, and out of all the discussions that we had on affordable housing, the only story that kind of struck me as okay, this looks like an actual vehicle towards upward mobility was the Habitat for Humanity program that was actually teaching you, you know, giving you the information, giving you the tools, uh, the knowledge uh, of how to, you know, boost your credit score, of how to actually um, uh, approach a. Uh, um, a mortgage situation and, and you know to to improve your situation to you know entice or to, to be in a better position for a mortgage even if you don't get a house through um habitat for humanity there is a program there to give you the information uh to help you be better equipped like that that felt more like okay they're help they're equipping people to to do for themselves um that was kind of the only project that really kind of gave me that feeling fully not only not only that but the habitat humanity is about is about people having some home ownership although right. I, did, I think i did hear recently that they only allow you to be in the home for a certain time or something like that or yeah there was something right, like right. That to it. but the point is at least they're talking about home ownership more than um you know these these programs are or, or these apartment buildings that are going up that you need to have you know you're on a sliding scale to get in because you just what you're saying is like a cash 22 um Miss E is saying that right now. Says says uh um yet an eighteen year old can't move out, but they but they can't work. It's a catch twenty two trap for real. Uh, Bob Chapman says, can anyone currently on government assistance qualify for so called affordable housing? Um, because that's that's a good question too. Uh, Von Chapman uh, um Miss E says, not without Section Eight. <clears throat> so Section Eight is a, and and we've been and there's a been big decline on Section Eight from what I understand. Yeah, yeah, especially in North Omaha, the the percentage of properties ex- accepting Section Eight in North Omaha um, are dwindling. It, it's, it's mostly moving, you know, hundred eighth, hundred twentieth. No, uh, Brianna Fool in the chat says, "I think the development of the airport is going to uh, alleviate <laughs> poverty in, in North O. Hopefully, more jobs for people in the community and more economic stimulation for local business." And that's why we've been talking about LB 1024 uh, so much, you know, and, and we'll be rounding back around to that here pretty soon um, as they get ready in the next following weeks, actually get ready for some of these public hearings and, and um, you know, really starting to engage uh, some of the community stakeholders. I definitely looking forward to uh, what comes of those conversations. But uh, this is kind of the only real I'm not going to say the only real opportunity, but one of the biggest chances for us to actually do some real um, work and, and, you know, actually get some economic stimulation in the community. Uh, because uh, as Brother Vaughn Chapman keeps saying, like talking about affordable housing is, isn't really going to help for people who can't afford to pay attention, which is uh, something that I always is a saying I always like to use, man. It is cheaper to pay attention. But if you can't afford to, to pay attention, uh, again, you end up in that that cycle where being poor is very costly. Yeah. In the chat, he's saying the philanthropists would serve the community best by providing or subsidizing good paying jobs that would allow a person to raise above the poverty level. Uh, that would allow the, the least amongst us to actual to actual affordable, so-called affordable housing, to actually be able to afford so-called affordable housing. Uh, Brother Muhammad up up top uh, a little bit further into the chat said control like Janet Jackson control, mm, control. Uh, the hamster wheel also Chrissy Norris is uh, is uh, giving us a, a testimony here she says I got a Medicaid and child care for a year after I got out of school uh, but after that year was up I was screwed child care for three children and nine dollars an hour just just doesn't math well I'm telling you, man, I'm blessed to be able to do this in the morning and, you know, DJ at night and, you know, kind of work the way that I work. Um, because if I had to get, you know, a typical nine to five I, where, you know, myself and, and my wife, we, we can't alternate our schedules. We had to both work. We would be screwed, man. Three thousand. odd. We did the math. It's two hundred fifty dollars a week per child. We have three children. 
That's crazy, man. $250 a week. That's several thousand dollars a month just for child care. And, 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 you know, that's not even really enough, to be honest with you. Like, we got child care providers in, in, in here that now we know their pain. We know what, what, what's, what they're suffering with, what, kind of, what happens with the business, how, how you, how you got to pay your people. Uh, and it's, it's not enough. Like, it, like, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. Man, how- and, 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 and I'm looking at the chat. Chrissy Kenora says, but I also have, uh, but I also lost my housing because I made too much money. Right. Again, that's exactly what Sister Wanda Lewis was saying. And that's exactly like we try to apply for um, child care subsidy and child care programs through the state of Georgia. We make apparently we make too much money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's, there's a big there's a big gap. There's a big gap of that. A lot of so. So I know when I'm, I'm thinking about this big gap, I'm thinking what happens after people get to that point? Well, there's all kinds of other programs out there because this is the nonprofit, especially in Omaha, is a nonprofit place, and they and so there's people that have come up with nonprofit organizations that have tried to try to bridge those gaps. Uh, it's it's kind of constant to to have to be looking. Like I said, it's too expensive to even pay attention. Like Von Chapman says, mm-hmm. uh, Rome's reviews. Uh, Mayor Sanchez has a, has a, a point too. He says, "We, us, me." You have to lift ourselves out of poverty. Stop, stop, stop spending and start, start, start saving. And uh, I don't want to leave that out of the conversation either. I definitely think this is something that we personally need to be taking care of, too. But we also got to remember that we're in a system that that holds a lot of this stuff back. And we need that system to act right, as well as ourselves uh, to to try to help some of this stuff, too. But, yeah, I don't want to leave that out of the conversation either. Also, um, Miss Erica Fell says they claim assistance is supposed to be a safety net and not a lifestyle. That's that my favorite quote of of, of uh, Kim Reynolds over there in in, <laughs> in Iowa saying, uh, "Our safety net is turned into a hammock." Mm-hmm. I thought about that quote too. <laughs> Man, she says, uh, "With my closing business due to cancer, I applied for ADC. Uh, they said I could. They said I could have four hundred nine dollars a month if I spent thirty hour thirty hours a week either training." job training or job searching. I have a business. I won't be able to do those activities while recuperating from surgery. Thankfully, I'll be okay. Someone else may really need that. Can you imagine you you got to go away for surgery and you're asking for some assistance and they're saying, well, <laughs> instead of working 40 hours a week, you got to work 30 to get some assistance and it ain't even enough assistance. Like, like they're missing the whole point of you asking for help. Mm-hmm. Wanda Lewis says some of these programs are des- designed to keep you stagnant. Like you said, poverty trap. Tania Patterson in the house. Good morning. Says uh, Douglas County Housing Authority Section 8 applications open today. So so, so then few out west properties are about to get sewn up. <sighs> Only a few. Only a few available. Uh, <laughs> Brother Mama said Curtis Mayfield, don't worry if there's hell below. We all going to go. Man. We all going to go. Um, Christy North says, how do you save, save, save when you literally live paycheck to paycheck? Good question. It gets tight at the end of the month, man. Some people, I mean, we've all been in a situation where we needed help. We needed the help. Yeah. I mean, on, on average, the, there was a, a statistic on average prior to COVID-19, the average household had only about $500, uh, emergency fund and, you know, 800 eight hundred dollar car repairment plan you know car repairment or um you know some uh any any bevy of things can happen a water heater goes out for people who own houses and things like that like anything can happen and you're behind um so yeah yeah it is definitely hard to save especially when everything is going up you know due to inflation uh which we'll kind of dive into here in a, a second as far as some of the uh mitigation tactics being used in dc uh but yeah yeah, these are real problems. Josh Tag in the chat says one possible solution to the poverty trap is to double the amount of assistance available and create transition fund that kicks in when a person's circumstances change so they don't lose their benefits right away. This encourages people to keep pushing and actually see the benefits of their hard work versus being punished. Right. Tell me, man, that punishment thing, this, uh, this, the punishment thing is is heavy in this country and it's personified in Nebraska as far as I'm concerned. Like everything is about punishing people for being, for not being, for not following some kind of program, for not, for not being 
I don't even know what. But it's but it's really like a, an attack on people of color. It's like it's like you you're just going to be punished because you're poor because you don't you don't because there's opportunities that you you're not able to 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 grasp to grab for whatever reason like so many different kinds of reasons too. Uh, Sean McCarthy says one of the many reasons why government needs to subsidize childcare childcare workers need more pay, but it's unsustainable if it's just left up to the parents who already spend almost all their paycheck on childcare. Everybody I talk to talks about this idea that you either like you come, you come to a point where it is worth it for you to stay home and watch the kids because you're paying more money to, so you're paying more money than you make on childcare usually. And somebody got to stay home and, and who can do that? Who can do that in this economy? Kate Dassault in the house. Hey, how you hey, doing? Hey, hey. She says on another subject, uh, still, a, still a follow the money story. Okay, am I missing? What, what did I miss? Did you? She posted a link uh, further up. Uh, I checked it out. Uh, the headline reads: Hundreds of venues sign up to not take cut of artist merchandise sales, uh, which is something you and I were actually just talking about. Um, the 360 deal is about to change up in a big way. Man, man, and talk about the economy of being an artist, which is. Uh, you know, one of the points of why we went out to California, uh, hoping to talk to some of these uh, artists about how they're making their money, how uh, they're surviving in this economy as artists uh, and, um, you know, so media people as well. Again, uh, Dave Chappelle, Tyler Crowley, they all have their own podcasts and things like that. Uh, right. So, yeah. And, and that was actually, uh, you know, a part of uh, the discussion at the Invest Fest that went over uh, again um, in this economy. A lot of people are turning to that, and that's how they're kind of figuring out how to work from home, uh, starting podcasts, content creation, um, teaching online courses, um, selling digital courses, things like that, um, merchandise, you know, all, all of those things that have kind of uh, grown uh, over the pandemic as people try to look for alternative streams of income and try not to fall into these poverty traps uh, that we're talking about. So true, so true. A couple of minutes before eight o'clock, I just want to jump back into the chat real quick. Wanda Lewis says, my mother was a single parent. And I remember when we were growing up, she had to turn down a raise in order to keep Medicaid so that we could have insurance. Isn't that, isn't yeah, scary? man. I mean, uh, it's, yeah. it, it's discuss how welfare is completely dismantled. You know, the, the black family, you know, a, a lot of. A lot of instances, the the man could not be present in the home for that, you know, welfare to the to qualify, you know, for the uh, the mother to qualify and the, the right. children to benefit from that stuff. So, poverty paradise, poverty traps. Very oh, true. Sense. Brianna Fool says, "I've heard uh, talks of legislation being introduced next session for universal child care in Nebraska. Keep a lookout. We definitely need to help advocate for that. Def. Uh, uh, do we need to advocate for for universal child care? Will it will it kill child care businesses that exist now if that happens? Mm, good question. Uh, will will that hurt will that hurt the local economy if uh, we have universal child care? Is there any other solutions that can help supplement some of the ones that are already in existence instead of uh, switching to this universal child care situation? Does universal child care include uh, education? Is there some? Is there going to be some? Uh, some uh, early childhood development situations attached to the universal child care. Uh, who, who's in charge of who, who's what, what's the curriculum for that? Got a lot of questions about the universal child care situation. Um, so uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Brianna full will definitely be talking about a lot of that for sure. Uh, also, yeah, Miss E says, uh, depending on what strings and hoops are involved, homogenized child care is dangerous. There you go from a child care uh, professional right there that has a has a business. Uh, so so uh, Brianna Fool says, yes, we need your voice to tell them what's up for sure. Um, also, Von Chapman says, uh, when you factor in child care, utilities, car payments, the formula for qualification for affordable housing is trash and won't work for the targeted community. And that's that's the interesting part. I'm glad you brought that up, Brother Vaughn, because um you know, in my situation, when we were trying to apply for you know, subsidy or assistance in child care, they did not factor in um, rent. They did not factor in any bills. They did not factor in inflation. Uh, mm -hmm. They literally just looked at how much money are you making? Uh, does it meet this threshold that we set? And mm -hmm. if you if you pass that, then. 
you know, um, but you know, it's a family of five. Like we can't just we were in a two two bedroom apartment. That's what we could afford, and, and it seems like we have to stay in that type of situation to be able to afford childcare, and it's just not. That's incredible. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Walla Lewis says that's why a lot of couples that have children together never get married because several benefits to the mother and children will be infringed upon. A lot of, lot of, lot of life choices have to be made over, over the, uh, over the economy, over what's going, what's going on with your personal economy, and and uh, and what happens is, and if you, especially if you're in a situation where you're living in poverty, we've all been in bad situations. Uh, where we was living in poverty below the poverty line and needed needed some kind of assistance and help. And think about all the ways and places you got that help from. Think about if it was living with the grandparents or living with your parents again. Uh, a lot of 20-year-olds live with their their parents. A lot of 30-year-olds live with their parents. Uh, that's been going around, going on uh, for the last five or five or six or seven years I've been reading about uh, because it's too, it's too, the cost of living is too high. And uh, and people need to try to f- figure out how to come together and, and take care of these things. Sometimes it's not just about Section Eight or or about welfare. Sometimes it's about uh, sometimes sometimes you getting that welfare from your dad. You know what I'm saying? Or you getting that welfare from uh, living with grandma? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So uh, we're all we're all getting it some kind of way, getting some kind of help, some kind of way. And this the sustainability of the individual is 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 so far away sometimes. And especially if you got a family. Like, it's like, I can't even really imagine, man. I'm hearing these stories and it's just incredible. Like, how do you have a family these days? How are you a young person that is not making a million dollars a year having to, even having a family right now? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's it's like you got to play a game the whole time. It's really crazy. Uh, Miss E says, it's why ghetto married <laughs> becomes a thing. Couples knowing that they're committed but can't get the benefits that come with marriage because then their children will lose benefits from the state. Tough situation to be in. Uh, let's take a quick break from this, man. A little smell of the coffee beans, a little breather. We'll jump into another subject when we, when we get back. Eight minutes, uh, three minutes after eight o'clock in the morning, if you believe in the concept of time. Thanks for everybody that's joining us this morning. Lots of good chat chiming going on. Uh, lots of diverse chat chiming going on, too. Uh, seeing some names I haven't seen for a while and everything else. So thanks for coming on in. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. You're listening to First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. Paul B, buddy to God, all of you, the chat chimer, stay tuned. Hey, 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 welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Pops, I got your new track. I got to load it up, but we'll get to it. Appreciate it. A little Pops groove going on right there. You're listening to First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. I'll be buddy to God, all of you, live from the void. <sighs> Still down with the COVIDs. Man. Kind of up, trying to get busy. Um, yeah, man. Lots of lots of stuff going on. We got the haps coming up pretty soon. Got some got some good stuff to talk about too. So get your haps ready for the end of the show. Also, stay tuned. We got special guest Jade Rogers coming coming in, and uh, we got to talk about an event that's happening. I'll just put it to you like this, y'all. You gonna have to ease on down the road to get your costume mm. because we're about to do the whiz the way the whiz needs to be done. So. We'll have her on to talk about that about 8.30, so stay tuned for her. It's going to be a good collaboration between the house 
of Afro Capes and Curls in First Sky Omaha for a very, very prolific event that I can't believe nobody's thought of before. But there we go. The Wiz is happening. Rocky Horror Picture Style, if you know what that is. We dressing up, we singing the songs, it's going down. Are you ready for this? We got, look, we got, she said, well, slide some more to me, baby. Nah. <laughs> we got, uh, I'm going to tell you right now, what's, what's really going down with that is uh, uh, you got about a month. You got about three three or four, or close to four weeks. Get ready. Get ready. Costumes together now. I went looking through, and of course, I'm thinking, I got to be like the mean old lion or something. I got to, I got to, you know, I got to be, uh, you know. And I'm, I am it. But then, bro, but then I, I looked at the rest. I was like, eh, there's so many costumes to choose from for this. One of the flying monkeys, uh, <laughs> Queen Eveline. I mean, like, it's not just Dorothy and, you know what I'm saying? It's going down. So, um, yeah, bro, you know, you know, you know what I'm trying to, because they, they patterned them, they, they patterned them flying monkeys off of George Clinton and them, man. Ah, uh, yeah. Monkey monkeys all day long. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be off the chain. We'll have Jay come talk about it, but, um, yeah, I don't know why nobody's thought of this before, but it's going down. We're going to be, we're going to be dancing in the aisles, singing the songs. And, uh, now that we, now that we're partnered with, uh, Afro Capes and Curls, man, then, then they're all about, she, she got, she got black folks dressing up. She got black folks cosplaying and stuff in, in a yeah, moment. So, so I, Yeah. Uh, let's see. What's the date on that? Well, here, let's go bring it up since we're talking about it. Um, it is in August, the end of August. So it's August 28th, Sunday, August 28th at 6 PM. The Wiz costume jams going down. Just tell you right now it's going down. Oh, also, um, well, I'll save this for the haps a little later on, but American sun that's happening over at Benson theater. Um, I'm, I'm allowed to give away some tickets hey. to American sun. So, uh, I don't know if you guys know about this, but uh, Kathy Tyree is directing American Son over at the Benson Theater. That run is coming up uh, starting on the 18th of August. I would really lo- love for like the whole, all the chat chimers are like, uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Like a big group of first guy, friends of First Guy Omaha to hit this together and check it out. So let's, let's try to coordinate that. Maybe I can get some help from somebody in the chat that needs that, that can, that can uh, help, help me do that. Help me put that together where we can get a bunch of of our friends of First Guy Omaha to hit the show at the same time. It'd be great. Be great. Uh, Stessie Jean says, good morning, First Guy Omaha family and friends. Welcome to Monday. It's welcome to you, Stessie Jean. Appreciate you. Brooke says, I don't need nobody to bring me no creepy people that came out of the walls, though. Yeah, we need all that. We need them trash cans with the teeth on them and everything. We're going we're gonna to try to do it big. <laughs> Uh, Facebook uses somebody record that for me. Who, where is this? Who's saying that? I can't see who's saying that. That must be on Friends of First Guy. Um, anyway, yeah, so lots coming up, lots of good, fun stuff coming up, buddy. I see you over there in in deep thought looking through the yeah. articles. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm but he's all business, so he's all business all the time. We, 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 we you know, <laughs> supplies, yeah, the whiz. Uh, who cares. <laughs> <laughs> about these articles yeah. but they ease on down to these articles <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact uh, it's, it's funny because we were laughing at, at some today uh, some of these memes are out of control man let me show you a meme real quick uh, oh man <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um, yeah yeah smallpox there's, there's all kinds of pox going on right now y'all um the return to smallpox, <sighs> monkeypox, which we it's talked a real about thing. the other day. It's a real thing. Uh, you can get it from skin contact. Apparently, we're going to be isolating in six feet and with masks and stuff still because of, of uh, if it's not for COVID, it'll be for monkeypox because it's the same thing going on. So uh, anyway, yeah, we just, we, we're just kind of like uh, just surveying what's going on in life <laughs> in the world. Trying to get to the nitty gritty of it all, man. Come on, man. What's, what's up? Uh, YouTube, let's see. Rome's reviews he says, I uh, picked the winner of the tickets out of the 134 and new subscribers. Mm-hmm. It's a good idea. I'm, I'm kind of with that on YouTube. He says, On YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so new subscribers 
if you go over to YouTube and subscribe, then we'll pick some winners out of there. Is what is what you what we're thinking. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, oh, Miss uh, Miss Eve, please record it for me. Surgery's on twenty fifth. Okay, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, sh- you know, yeah. Hugs, hugs for that. Hugs for hugs and prayers for that for your surgery that's happening there. But yeah, we'll we'll okay. definitely record that so you can check it out, and we'll do it again. It's gonna be an annual thing like Rocky Horror Picture Show. So that's what it is. Uh, anyways, we're back eight eleven right now. If you believe in the concept of time, Pop says, "Yep, that's Tupac. That's." Tupac's I know about. Sorry, I couldn't resist. Say what? What you talking about, Pop? I must have missed something he said. But let me see if I can go up. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, not sure, Pops. I might have lost it. It might be the COVID haze on my part. Oh, it's the dad joke, bro. <laughs> okay, all right. I know what you guys are talking about. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, we better hurry up and get back to it before Buddy gets upset because <laughs> he's all business. Is more, oh, two box, two box. I got it. Okay. <laughs> ah. Oh. You got two box going on. Okay, got it. <laughs> I wish I had that thing. I got that, that little thing, the little drum roll on this machine. I'll find it. <laughs> uh, welcome back. Uh, buddy, what do you, what do you want to jump into next? <laughs> it is kind of getting off the rails with, with the dad jokes. Let's uh, <laughs> reel it back in, man. But uh, speaking of off the rails, I actually um, the story I'm looking at is talking about getting on the rails. Mm. Uh, talking about the streetcar project. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's quite interesting, man. Uh, apparently, they do have. Uh, this is as reported by Omaha World Herald. Uh, we're following the money. Mm. And um, this is actually answered a question that we had uh, from a previous discussion as far as what is Omaha's plan. And, and we're talking about affordable housing and how it um, impacts, you know, poverty in North and South Omaha, or as we're calling it now, East Omaha. And th- the question always is, you know, where does Omaha, the, the people who have been um, uh, elected, you know, to make these decisions to plan, uh, what what is the plan for Omaha, uh, the grand scheme, the master plan for Omaha, and how does East Omaha fall into that? And I'm um, kind of getting a glimpse from the streetcar uh, article. It's kind of interesting uh, as this is a part of the full uh, urban core plan uh, that has been set. Um, $306 million project will be paid for the revenue of, uh, or excuse me, revenue from a special TIF uh, district spanning the entire streetcar route. So again, they're uh, planning a whole TIF district uh, that is going to span from uh, Farnham to Harney from 42nd to I just saw it. I just saw how uh, extensive this is. But um, basically, they're going to renovate the whole center of the, the city and they're expecting jobs uh, to come from this. And, and I'm just wondering how this will impact North and South Omaha. And it seems like these are completely two different conversations uh, that are happening. You have on one end, you know, all of these um, affordable housing projects that are, you know, popping up and going to continue to pop up, I expect, uh, in North and South Omaha. Uh, which, uh, as we've been discussing already, you know, is questionable how much of an impact uh, that's going to have without any jobs being uh, presented in those areas. Uh, And then on the same token, at the same time, we have this whole midtown corridor uh, that's uh, apparently going to get a full multi-million dollar renovation. And I just um, I'm wondering how many people in North and South Omaha are going to have access to those jobs that they're expecting. And uh, how many jobs are they expecting? Uh, well, according to the Greater Omaha Chamber's vision for the next 20 years, numerous high rises and dense construction uh, will pull 30,000 more workers. So they're expecting 30,000 more jobs and 30,000 more residents into the area. So, again, who are those jobs going to and where are those residents coming from uh, are my questions. Uh, for this. So Omaha will rely on the new development, i.e. not just the streetcar, but this whole midtown reconstruction project uh, and the increased property taxes that come with it to pay off the bonds used to finance the streetcars 
uh, construction and plans to do this by creating a TIF district. Uh, again, TIF allows the developer of a city approved project to take out a loan uh, to pay for eligible redevelopment expenses. Uh, the loan is, is again paid back gen generally over 15 to 20 year period. And, and I, I want to point out this uh, whole 15 to 20 year period uh, for TIF and the fact that, again, they're expecting uh, through this vision for these 30,000 jobs and 30,000 residents to come within the next 20 years. That brings me right back to my point of where do we fall in all of this plan? I'm kind of getting the sense that um, by this 20 years, they're not expecting a lot of the residents of North and South Omaha uh, to even be around to get these jobs or to uh, get these um, mm. to move into these areas. You see, it'll be gentrified by then, basically. That's what that's what it's looking like to me. That's what it's sounding like to me. Hmm. Y'all let me know. Ms. Hickerfeld says, uh, there's some weird classism with the 24th Street trolley thing. The designer was interviewed and said it'll be better and used because it'll be better and used because it's not a bus. Mm. I've lived in cities where the shiny light rail looks just like the buses in three years. <laughs> Shake my head. True. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Interesting that you say that. Yeah, his name is Rick Gustafsson, and he is a apparently nationally, nationally known streetcar construction planner. Uh, he's done projects from Detroit to Los Angeles, and um, he is now being paid by uh, the city of Omaha and the greater Omaha chamber, actually the greater Omaha chamber specifically is paying for, uh, this guy's position. Uh, but yeah, he's being brought in to, uh, plan out this whole project, which he is considering a catalyst for urban, um, what would he say? Catalyst for urban core is what he's calling it. I wonder what that means to him. Uh, Facebook, you said he's an older white man, Josh, Tyson. yeah. The powers that be are showing they don't really care about North or South. Oh, Von Chapman is asking, is there is there a copy of the master plan available for general public to see? I'm glad you asked. That is why that is what I was looking at. That is kind of what I was scrolling through. So there is. Um, a copy. um yeah, it looks like it. It looks like it here. I'll, I'll, this is the this is the total mobility system. So this is the streetcar corridor plan. Uh, that is a part of this whole yeah. master plan. Okay, so this is not the master plan. This is just the streetcar uh, part of it. Yeah, this is a part of it. This is a part of it. I haven't been able to find the more the full master plan, but this is a, a glimpse into it. This is a glimpse into what they're expecting for the next uh twenty or so years, and this is coming out of uh the urban core redevelopment plan. Uh, that was agreed upon back in March uh, by the city council and Omaha Chamber of Commerce, um, which they paid, uh, I think, $100,000 to a Maryland-based company called Money uh, Money Cap Incorporated uh, was the company that um, they're a finance consultation company. So they were paid for their analysis to come up with this plan. Anybody in the chat going to excited about the streetcar? Ready to ride it? Um, something that might might uh is there something that you might use it for? You particular route to work or anything? Or you think this is a beautification of the city? What what do you think about this? I'm putting it to the chat, the chat chimers and even the ghost listeners uh to to think about it if they don't want to comment. Uh, what what what's your what what's your impression of this? I mean, without all the stuff that we are talking about here, and without, you know, just you personally, your impression of what's going on here with the, with this streetcar, is it is it an exciting thing? Is it a cool thing? I mean, I'm I'm sure some of us are gonna be riding it. Brooke says, "What's the purpose?" Tessie Jean says, "No," emphatically. Miss uh, mm. E says there have been racist murders on the light rails in other cities. They're just expensive new buses. Chris Ignore says it's BS. Uh, transportation is the issue for us in the city, for sure. Uh, the bus system is one of the raggediest I've seen in any city I've lived in. Um, 
bus system could use some couple couple hundred million dollars to be renovated. I th- I feel like, um, especially in North and South Omaha, why is there why is there really nothing that can get you to from one side of North Omaha to the other side of South? Um, you know the east east side seems to be cut off from a lot. Take the we can take the bus up to 164th or something like that. But if you want to get to the uh, metro campus in Elkhorn, you got to take an Uber from the bus stop to get to the school. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of issues and problems. And so, you know, what is the streetcar? Is this something that they just are feeling like is another, you know, uh, Gene Leahy Mall feature for for tourists to come and have a good time? hanging out you know that tourism thing is is something else man there's always a lot of dollars that are that's that uh people give for the purpose of when people come to town as if this is a, some kind of tourist destination well that's that's the that's the interesting point because uh the gustafson guy is quoted in this article saying um they recognize they need a catalyst and that's what this is so they're expecting this is kind of the whole like you've been saying for years paul the whole build it and they shall and they will come mentality uh, he says it's a catalyst for instilling confidence in private investors that they can build different uh, differently and expect it to work so uh, again it's all about enticing private investors uh to come into this area and i've actually found the the general area that they're expecting to redevelop uh, it's coming street on the north, so kind of right at the where the north Omaha the north Omaha wall um to Levin Street on this the Leavenworth Street on the south, so the south Omaha wall mm. and then uh forty eighth on the west and thirty fifth and council bluffs to the east so from thirty fifth street to council bluffs in council bluffs all the way to forty eighth street um and it will include the dodge park Dodge park golf course and river's edge development, which I believe. Uh, is where they're building that new multi-million dollar science complex. Uh, so, yeah, it's just connecting all of their, because uh, I, I think 48 takes you right into the Midtown area. Is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, almost almost Blackstone. Right, right. Uh, Missy says, I've never thought I need to visit a town because they have a cool park. <laughs> Sean McCarthy says, I remember the $300 to $400 million they invested in Midtown Crossing. And while I'm glad they have some green space, uh, by all other accounts, the investment did not pay off. A lot of those $250,000 plus condos had to turn into rentals. I, I, doubt, they, I doubt they sold out those, those, those condos. I, I doubt they sold out those bro, condos. When, I first, when that thing was first built, I went and looked at them condos. And, the con- and I was looking at the condo, and it was going to cost me $85,000. <clears throat> said well i don't know about that i came i came back maybe three or four months later they had upped it to two hundred fifty thousand dollars for like a one or two bedroom condo and so mm-hmm. i wondered i wondered who got into those and it's interesting that you're saying nobody bought them they had to turn them into rentals yeah well, i mean look at some of the businesses in that area didn't that that theater just go under in that area uh, uh, Alamo had to come and bail in and, uh, and buy it because uh, it yeah the the theater went under. I I don't I don't really go. There's not any really businesses. Only time I ever go to Midtown is if I'm gonna. Well, I might go see a movie in Alamo, but uh, Jazz on the Green. That's about it. Might hit Modern Love. That's about it. Modern Love. Yeah. Now now that Modern Love's over there in that area. Yeah. True. Um. But. Yeah, I, I've been hitting Blackstone more than Midtown. Been everywhere more than Mid. Midtown is like the last little spot. It's, for me, it's downtown. Then it might be Benson. Then it might be Blackstone. <laughs> but, I mean, you roll through. You roll through Midtown. I don't know. Uh, jumping back into the chat real quick. Uh, Von Chapman says, not a damn dime for poverty in North Omaha. There you go. That's not the whole point. That's the uh, point. We'll see, we got a good morning Facebook user. Let's see if I can see who that is. Oh, uh, we got what up, people from Jonathan Benjamin Alvarado. What's going on? Hey. Live from Texas. Thanks for joining us. Uh, miss you already. Um, also, Wanda Lewis says, I remember what they said about, about the Highlander. What did they say about the Highlander? Uh, how many people bought condos there? I didn't know there was condos for sale at the Highlander. 
Uh, mm-hmm. Versus they're so small. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that too being super small. Uh, that's interesting that they turn into rentals. Didn't even never even knew that. And never how much is the rent? Up. How much is the rent? Is the next question. Uh, they all they got tax deductions due to them not being sold. Uh, it's all a hustle. Uh, they were they were overinflated intentionally. Wow. So again, this whole this whole plan, they're within the next twenty years. They are expecting numerous high rises, so more development, dense construction. Uh, which uh, apparently they're expecting to pull in thirty thousand jobs and thirty thousand residents. My question is, who's going to get these jobs, and where are the residents going to come from? I feel like it's going to be out west. I feel like it's going to be a mass exodus of, you know, people from West Omaha trying to come downtown to get closer to all these amenities that they're starting to invest in. And while the people in North Omaha won't have the skills, won't have the education, won't have the information to get some of these jobs. And will be left out. Hmm. Sounds like it was almost planned that way. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you'll think, you'll think, you'll think. Von so. Chapman says, "Then who owns the Highlander?" Uh, also, Marianne Williams says, "Morning, all. Are streetcars in a year-round thing? Who will use it in Nebraska winters? If you close the windows and doors, isn't that just a bus?" <laughs> I ain't even think about that. I ain't even think about that. How much money is it going to cost to keep snow off the off the track? Man, ice they, off the track. Where they keep snow off the tracks is. <laughs> Around here, they don't. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to know. Uh, Kimber, a good, so good morning. Good morning to you as well. Appreciate that. Stacy Jean says, "I drive through Midtown. That's it." Who? Uh, going back up into the chat real quick, just to switch gears real quick. Uh, there was something that Von Chapman said that I was like, "Say what?" Um, <laughs> where was that at? Something about Legionnaires' disease. You get some. Oh, he says the the Legionnaires' disease outbreak. Has hit Napa Valley. It started when you and Buddy were here. <laughs> oh, we, no. we, didn't start, we didn't start no 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 legionnaires. No. Uh, but that's interesting though. I was wondering uh, after because I think I caught COVID at the concert, so I was wondering if there was if uh, there was an outbreak or you know if, they, if, they, if there's any news on that. I've been trying to look for it. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Kimber Snipes says hardly anyone uses the orbit, which Omaha was hella late on, which is very interesting too. The orbit. Good, 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 uh, good observation. Because that is, I have never been on the orbit yet. That's that's a, some kind of high power bus or something, right? Or another another line or something. It's like an extended bus. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Brooks says still trying to figure out what the purpose is. This isn't San Francisco. We don't have any scenic views. Uh, and the whole study- purpose is to entice private investors to come in that's that, that's what the guy is saying he says it's a catalyst for instilling confidence in private investors that they can build and expect it to work so it's just something to you know and, and also so they're trying to entice them with this project as well as tiff like let's not forget that they're planning to achieve all of this by creating a tiff district a tiff district that's what so, they're calling it. Straight up. Yeah, tip. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole TIF district. So between 35th uh, and Council Bluffs and 48th Street in Omaha and Leavenworth and Cumming Street, that whole area is going to be TIF land. Mm. <sighs> That's, uh, sounds. And again. Ominous. There's a certain certain amount of blight that you need to qualify for TIFF. We got we got plenty of blight <laughs> to go around, I guess. Uh, anyway, it's eight thirty right now. Let's shift gears. Eight thirty right now. If you believe in the concept of time, you're listening to First Sky Omaha Radio. First Sky Omaha in the morning. In the morning. Paul B. Buddy to God. Star Trek Rich. Again. Uh, uh, Kimber Snipes, you 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 come in on Friends of First Sky Omaha, but the, the conversation mainly is happening on the actual page. So I put the link in there for you to hit that. Come in on the re- regular First Sky Omaha page, and uh, that's where you'll see uh, more people doing saying what they're saying. And also, I can see your name at that point too. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Also, uh, she says, uh, and it, isn't it true that there is no new mutual without the without the streetcar? 
I'm late. Somebody may have already brought that up. Mm. No, Ooh, no, I forgot that was part of the deal. You're right on time. You're right on time with that deal. one. Very interesting. Uh, it's all connected, man. It's all yeah. a part of the plan. It's all part of the plan. Moving on, we got a new plan happening, and we got a new mm. guest coming on in to tell us about this new plan. <laughs> one of my favorite people in Omaha. What's going on, Jade Rogers? How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you? Look at you with your gamer chair back there and everything. Yeah, I like that chair. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I like the chair. You got, you got, you got the uh, trinkets, got the Darth Vader. And, Come on, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. that. I like that. Uh, this, so, is, this is the trim down version. <laughs> wow. That's what's up. Uh, Jade Rogers, House of Afro Capes and Curls. We've been talking about her on the show a lot. I'm glad to finally have you on. And uh, and I'm glad to finally have you on to talk about this uh, very, very cool collaboration that we got going on, too. Uh, first of all, uh, how are you and what's going on with you these days? There are so many things. We don't even have time to talk about all of them. Give me one. Yeah. Give me one at least. Well, we just finished a wonderful two-week camp with the Young History Detectives. Oh, yes. Tell yes. us about the Young History Detectives. Please let people know about that. <laughs> Man. So the Young History Detectives is the youth program through the House of Afros, Capes, and Curls. Um, this, this year, they were on the second year on the project, the Spatial Memory Project, researching addresses in North Omaha, specifically 24th Street this year. And then we will start to branch off on 16th and 30th to collect all of the information that they can find about an address over a period of years to collect um, all this information so that we can then create some kind of VR experience or exhibition of what North Omaha has looked like over the years. Come on, man. Come man, on. That's, that sounds like epic. That sounds like an epic uh, undertaking, but uh, very, very, very insightful. And uh, yeah. man, man. As a as a history head, I'm 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 kind of like geeking out inside. I'm not gonna lie. Look, look uh, I got I got to tell you, you need to, We should. This is also something we should team up on. We're working on a documentary with Curly Martin, and Curly Martin is talking about the the history of. He's talking about the the area in ways that I've never heard nobody talk about the areas. So mm-hmm. we'll we'll talk to some elders, and they'll be like, "In this building, this is where this happened." Right. Curly, Martin, Curly, Curly Martin will be like. Yeah, that, that Joe Jackson used to stand outside shining shoes right here. That he'll name the shoe shiner that was on the mm. corner. Of like he, he knew the details. So let's let's uh let's collaborate on some of that too. Anyway, go on, go on, go on. Yeah, but that's that's what they're doing. So they're using city directories, newspapers, Omaha Star, Omaha World Herald, um, looking through the the Registrar of Deeds office. Um, Zillow, census records, anything that they can find mm. to to figure out what the history of that space is from about 1920 to present wow. so that we have a collection of information about spaces. So they're looking at businesses and also looking at residences, specifically for this particular group, residences that were connected to their family, which leads mm. to other parts of the project that will begin to expand. Uh, those of you that are listening to this right now, I know you're being awed by by the fact that there's somebody doing these things. Uh, just just think about it in terms of, you know, we always are creating this mental list of, of uh, organizations that we want to donate to. Go on, go on, put House of Afro Cape Cur- Capes and Curls on that list, please, because as you can see, uh, we're doing fun things. We're doing in- important things. There's all kinds of things that is happening here. So, uh, by the way, if you, do, if you guys have uh, heard about the AfroCon, I got my coffee. Oh. Uh, th- <laughs> October seventh and eighth. There you go. So she's mm, she's behind nice. Africon as well. Yep, yep. October seventh and eighth. <laughs> yes. uh, so there's a. You do have a lot going on. Uh, definitely, we'll put. We'll be able to. You know, put your information in the chat so people can go see all the stuff that you have happening. Because yeah. uh, we'll have to have you on regularly to talk about it too, because you do have a lot going on. It's we can get all. It really is. It really is. This this is this is your this is like a 
And this ain't even your full time gig. You also teach, right? Yeah, and that's that's what I was going to get into because uh, <laughs> your name came up on <laughs> on a discussion we were having. Uh, shout out to to Chris Bowling. I uh, was kind of talking about the historical covenants, uh, yes. and, and yeah, and the racial covenants and housing, which you've been talking about for majority of the show today, as far as affordable housing. Uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, I would love to just spend a day to, to, to you know talk to you about some of the work that you're doing in that regard, as far as your day job. Uh, but we're here to talk about House of Afro's Capes and Curls. Well, wait a what is your day job, though? What, what well, right now, the House of Afro's Capes and Curls. Well, the house is always my full time job. Nice. I'm, you know, it's 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 the need. Um, and I've shifted some focus because I really wanted to dedicate the time with the kids. Um, the the young history detectives this summer, they they wowed me because. Mm. I, I knew that last summer we did the same project on a smaller scale, just to kind of see what they could do, what they could figure out and how far I could push them and take this. And this summer, they just blew me away with the things that they were able to discover. But what it does is it allows them to see what North Omaha was. And then they start to ask questions themselves, like why is there no roller rink or ice cream shop or flower shop or cleaners and grocery stores and meat markets and all of these things that used to be there. So then they start to ask other questions. So um, it's an important work. Man, I love it. it. Definitely is, definitely. What, what is it called again, Spatial what? It's the Spatial Memory Project. Spatial is memory the, project. That's the specific project for the young history detectives. Um, it's been the summer camp for last year and then this year, and then we'll continue it in the fall. Man, we, we definitely should have brought you on last season of For Space is the Place. Uh, and that would have been a perfect, perfect project to, to discuss and kind of uh, promote uh, during that. But still, I mean, we would love, you know, uh, to. so this is something you do every summer. Yes. Like. Yeah. Okay. 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 That's I try to remember cool. that. I want to jump into a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, Ron's Review says, uh, where, where are you from and, and, and uh, what got you started in these types of things? Where am I from? I'm from Omaha. North Omaha. North side. <laughs> um, what got me started? I'm a displaced person. <laughs> the okay. realization you of, you know, I lived on 27th and Pratt. And when you're on North Freeway and you're driving, you're driving over my house. Wow. Um, the And realizing as an adult that that really did something to me as a kid growing up in the neighborhood and knowing what it was what it was for my siblings that are much older than me. And so ever since I was 18, I always came back to North Omaha to, to work in nonprofit organizations because I always felt like I feel always felt like there was something I needed to do there. So that's what's up. Yeah. Well, it's kind of felt the calling. Somewhere called. Now, uh, just to let people know, uh, when I think of Jade and, and I talk about her to people, you know, I, I remind I remind people that uh, her organization is called the House of Afro Capes and Curls because she's a, a very big nerd, black nerd. We call blurred yes. sometimes, yes. Uh, and we're, and and they and that means that uh, she's all into you know Star Trek, Star Wars. She's into she's into so many different things. She actually has a show where they review a lot of different like science fiction movies and, and TV shows and so on and so forth. Uh, bring, brings me to this next question because everybody around our camp is Star Trek heads. Uh, we, we need to have some kind of Trekkie thing happen. I'm going to tell you that right now because my sister Brooke is in the chat and she's asking, she's asking questions. And uh, one of the questions that she's asking is, uh, is, she says, I've never been to Africon. Do you have a panelist of black comic book creators? Is the, is it a in person or virtual? I know where she's going. She's going, she's going to Star Wars with this, but let's talk about it. Um, well, 2019 was our first Afrocon and it was in person at Metro. Um, the last two years during the pandemic, we have been virtual. 2022, we will be in person at Metro. Hey. On October 8th, October 7th, there'll be some different things happening. But the theme for uh, for AfroCon this year is engage. Now, however you want to take that. I do have Uhura right here. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I'm collecting as many comic book creators and content creators as I possibly can. I am always asking you know for other people to you know 
bring people out of the woodwork because I know that the people are here. Um, I have connections with with some, and we're just trying to build Afrocon so that it is a space for all of the content creators, whether it's comic books, uh, podcasts, artists, you know, anyone that is doing anything that they love and nerd out about. There you go. Yeah, uh, I messed up and said Star Wars, and Brooke is like, no, nah, Star Trek, Paul. Yeah. Get, get, her, I, get it together. I knew. I, I, knew, yeah. I knew. I knew. And yeah. you know, yeah. and you know, we're about both these days. Ain't no rivalry like back in the 80s when it was like, you know, Star Wars, I mean, Star Wars no. versus Star Trek. There yeah, still, still is. Still, still yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you talk about, Paul. What you talk right. about? <laughs> no, there, there is. is. There is. Well, we, we like as, as somebody who, uh, who went to the first Afrocon, man, um, I'm definitely excited for, for you to bring it back in person. Um, excited to see you know what what types of new ideas, new new things you have because the first one had a lot of man for man a lot of like different seminars, a lot of booths. I remember the the costume creation with the duct tape was, was a huge hit. A lot of people enjoyed that. It's it's just a good time, man. It's a good time. So um, Super definitely cool. looking forward to that. Uh, jumping in the chat real quick, there's some resources that people are giving you. Uh, Brooke says I have one for you. She has a, a person that you can connect to. Uh, comic book uh what was it what was she asking about the uh comic yeah, book content creator? Creating, yeah. yeah also von chapman says, also von chapman says the the late rudy smith who worked for the world herald as a photojournalist has captured north omaha in his work from a historical perspective please find out who who has his work so his wife has cool. his work oh you already know no, already on it already on it i used to work with rudy i worked with the great plains like history museum so yeah that's what's up You've done yeah, a lot. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, let's let's go ahead and get to the, the hot topic that a lot of people are excited about talking about the event coming up. Uh, the the yeah. Wiz, the Wiz. Uh, can you can you tell us about that and kind of what sparked that idea and, and what people can expect? Um, <laughs> let's see. What happened, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to show you your beautiful flyer that you made there. That was. Awesome. <laughs> No, oh, yeah. what ha- how did how did it happen, Paul? Well, it happened because we were we, we were talking about it, and uh, and I, you know, this there's this idea that was floating around that I was like, how come nobody has ever came up with this idea uh, to do the whiz uh, for the way that white folks do Rocky Horror Picture Show, and that is, and and I can't think of anybody else that can help me put this together than a person who is already getting black folks to dress in cosplay and stuff for the last two or three years because everybody thought nobody would do that. Everybody thought black folks in North Omaha ain't going to be dressing up right. in costumes and stuff. You know, yes, Jake's not going to do it. Because some people told me when we had the Black to the Future ball, black people ain't going to dress up for that. Come on, now. <laughs> if we're going to do anything, we're going to dress up now. Well, what we have discovered is when you open the door and create the safe space and say, it's okay, then people have just started to come out and Mm -hmm. show out. Um, I think the Steampunk Tea Party definitely showed that people are willing and wanting to engage in a new and, and inspiring way with cosplay and dressing up. I had no idea that that our community would come head to toe steampunk, but it was wall to wall black people. I got to see the photos. I'm so mad I missed it. I know it got national coverage. It's, a, it's such a rare thing. It got national coverage. It did. Yeah. It did. Steampunk, right. The book Make is the coming. Ring. The book is coming. The book is hey, coming. Okay. A full book. <laughs> so mad I wasn't in it. So mad I missed it. I- did somebody tell you? You did. You did. I feel you told like me. somebody told you. You told me. You told me. But I'm. I'm. T- I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I'm so encouraged by uh, people. People feeling cool and free enough to to put on costumes and go out and have fun this way. And I'm so excited about what we're gonna do. The Wiz is such. A, I don't know if 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 uh, who I'm thinking about my audience right now. I'm thinking about who we're talking to. I know most of us in here have seen The Wiz. Have grown up with The Wiz. It's yeah, been a huge, huge part of our life. The Wiz. If you have not seen The Wiz, go check out The Wiz. It's just uh, it's it's just most one of the most iconic movies ever. Uh, and it's and thank you, thank you, Pops. This is a brilliant idea. So glad it's being implemented. Who, who, how come somebody didn't think of this before? Black folks also need a Rocky Horror Picture Show style thing to do. This is it. Man. Dress, dress up in the costumes. 
dance in the aisles, sing the songs, because we all know them. And I feel like I I told you this, I don't, maybe when we first met, that this was something that I wanted to do because it lends itself so much to, everybody knows all the songs. Right. And the dances, and you could pick anything to dress up. You could just come oh, in gold or green or red. There you go. <laughs> you know, or uh, you know, it's there's so many ways to play with the the costuming and just have fun, right. and that's the most important part. Black people need to have fun. Yeah. Man, man, come on, with it. come on, and, and safe spaces and places. Yes. So uh, definitely, definitely looking forward uh, to to just seeing you know the outcome of this and uh, already a lot of excitement surrounding this. Uh, but you are not just having the event, but you're also uh, helping people prepare for the event. Uh, to my understanding, there is a Paul just saw the uh, show, the flyer uh, costume extravaganza. That's kind of helping people prepare for that. Can you talk no, about that a little bit? No, that's the flyer for the, the actual, no, that's the, that's the yeah, actual yeah. thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if yeah. people want help, you know, uh, yeah, it's not a hard thing. I mean, you've you've done it before, where you put you put pre parties together to help people get their you know to to, yes. to help people get their costumes together for the party. Uh, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe we might we might need to put something like that on for this. Yeah, uh, so I, I was thinking maybe. <laughs> uh, put it out there to the chat. You guys, let us know what you think about this. Are you guys, uh, anybody in the chat, thinking uh, excited about this, wanting to come, wanting to get busy with it. Uh, do we need to have a little uh, party beforehand to talk about some of that? You just opened my mind up about costumes, just talking about uh, red, wearing red, green, and gold. Like, even if you yeah. just wanted to wear your disco dress, wear, wear mm-hmm. a red one. I mean, you know, there's so many costumes to choose from in this movie. You don't just have to be the lion, the tin man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, right. right. The funky monkey. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the the the, <laughs> the monkey, the flying monkey. Wear, wear a white outfit and some red shoes. Like... <laughs> It's, there you go. It's yeah. It's really Dorothy's the uh, Diana Ross's costume was very minimal mm-hmm. dress. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, don't bring Toto though. You can't bring no dogs into the <laughs> bring a stuffed <laughs> animal. Yeah. yeah, don't bring no dogs to the business theater. Don't do it. Don't do it. Not not a real dog. No. Uh, <laughs> so I, of course we want to see everybody get go all the way out. I want to see the Tin Man. I want somebody slide some oil to me. I want to see you know of course, but. If uh, if you don't have the means and the capacity to go all out that way, there's so many different things you can do, and uh, so many different characters to choose from is crazy. So anybody wants to be involved with this too, let us know. We can we can use some collaboration on on uh, decorating the, the theater. There's all kinds of stuff that we can be doing here. So uh, reach out to reach out to me on the private message and let me know what's going on. Brick says, "What did Tiny look like? <clears throat> what you mean? Who Tiny? Who are you talking about?" <laughs> Tiny, she was metal. Oh, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, Paul. <laughs> so many different characters. We just don't, yeah, really, yeah. So the most many. important part is that you show up, show out, and have fun, though. So, right. definitely, definitely right. check it out, show up, show out, support, support. Uh, because this is something different, but this is th- these are the types of different things uh, that the community needs, man. So, Josh Tate, yeah. that means you too. He said the soundtrack of the Wiz is alone is a classic. I want to see you there dressed up. Yeah, same. man. Yeah. Yeah. Going down. Bring the ukulele. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I forgot about Tiny the Tin Man's wife. Woo. You need to rewatch. Let's see. You know, if she said Teeny, that's, re- that's really what, what was on my mind there. Oh, okay. The teeny, not Tiny. Yeah. Yep, yep. Marianne Williams says, "I just watched The Wiz again last week, and uh, when it came, when it, when I came upon it, so so fun. This is a great idea. Can brown people from Lincoln come? Brown, oh, white, black, absolutely. red, everybody can come, come through. through. Come through. So, so I must say, when I'm talking about the House of Afro's Capes and Curls, my target is always black people right. because in nerd spaces, those are not always safe spaces. But the House of Afro's Capes and Curls is for everyone. There you go." There you go. And uh, same here. This is a partnership with uh, with First Sky Omaha. So this is us uh, venturing into this uh, this event space as well. And you already know that we uh, embrace everyone as well. So it should, it should be a really really good time. But um, yeah, I'm encouraging all Black folks to get dressed. I mean, it's just it's one of the movies that is part of your your growing up. Oh, yeah, you know it's a rite of passage. It's a rite of passage. That's exactly yeah. right. I remember taking. Yeah. I remember my little cousin. 
my cousin coming over being like, it's time for little Brandon to watch The Wiz <laughs> get together as a family and do uh, that. Uh, uh, Straight uh, up, man. Straight up. Now, well, I do yeah. have to say one more thing. Okay. Because I'm going to get yelled at if I don't mention it. Uh oh, we don't want that. We don't want that. The House of Afro's Capes and Curls and Our Family Plays Games has a game night coming up on August 20th at Site One Brewery. So come play some game games. Brewery. Talk again. about your costume. That could be the place to do that kind of thing. Say it again. What was the date? August 20th. August Saturday. Okay. Nine. Five to ten. We'll be playing board games and eating snacks. There you go. Sounds like a good time. Uh, also, I was uh, kind of wondering anyone who's interested in getting involved. Uh, do you, you do memberships for House of Afro's Capes and Curls, correct? Uh, or, we don't. Uh, how, it's just oh, it's just okay. Open. So, just come so how can people join? Like, how can people get get involved? Just show up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, simple enough. RSVP. <laughs> That's that is about it. Well, give me the website that people can check out. Afroscapescurls.com. Yeah, just dropped it into the chat. That'll uh, work. Yeah. Got it. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you very much for coming through and letting us know about this. We'll have to have you back again to talk about some of the other stuff that you got going on. A lot of things yes. going. Yep. Yep. Thank and, you uh, very much for having yeah. me. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Appreciate you. Yeah, no, definitely. Thanks for joining us, uh, especially this early in the morning. Um, and just thanks for all the work. I mean, definitely interested in seeing how that um, that uh, spatial memory project pans out. Uh, definitely shout out to all the youth uh, involved in that. And uh, when when we come back around to next uh, summer, definitely want to you know get get with you early uh, so we can yes. you know get get some other youth involved. Uh, it's definitely a dope yes, project. Absolutely. Get with Brooke off. When you get offline, she's asking where's a good place to uh, get costume supplies. Maybe you guys can talk uh, via Facebook. I want, I want you guys to connect anyway. And yes, Brooke, kids can come. This is definitely a family event. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. So thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming and we'll, we'll talk to you very, very soon. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Peace. Have a good one. Peace. All right. Love there you go. Love that woman right there. Jade is, is the bomb. Man, I really appreciate it. Uh, Miss E says, uh, when it first came out, my mother had a party of like 20 people. We went to Chinese food, then walked to the theater. It was so fly. Uh, I remember being a kid watching it. My grandfather had a, a private school. He took the whole school to go to the Crest Theater in San Bernardino, California, and, and uh, to all watch it. So mm. I remember being very young when that happened, and it was very, very cool. Um, so yeah, yeah, man, good stuff. Very positive. Those were my early early memories watching it at daycare, like third, wow. second, third grade. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what's up. <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out to Nearest Pee Pee Palace, man. Yeah, there you go. That's what's up, man. Uh, it is a uh, uh, six minutes until nine o'clock. If you believe in the concept of time, uh, we are getting towards the end of the show already. So uh, yeah, it's about that time for the haps. If uh, more, you got a little, do we got any more to talk about a little lightning round happening or we, we can, we can squeeze in a little lightning round. It is Monday. So we're not doing too extensive of a haps, uh, kind of save that for when we get closer to the weekend. Word up. Uh, but we uh, do appreciate, I think I did see a few people dropping some things, uh, in the chat. Um, but yes, yes. Before we get out of here, uh, let's see. We did talk about the streetcar situation. Um, we did not get to talk about the inflation bill that was just uh, signed uh, oh, yeah. just on Sunday afternoon uh, passed Democrats a uh, 750 million or excuse me, billion with the B, 750 billion dollar uh, health care tax and climate bill. Um, this is, uh, again, another bill aimed at uh, slowing down or, or hopefully reversing uh, inflation. Uh, this is called the Inflation Reduction Act. And will represent the largest climate investment in U.S. history, again, to the tune of seven hundred billion dollars, the total uh, price tag for the bill. Uh, So, uh, again, D.C. trying to to stem off or slow down uh, inflation and kind of the the effects of, of, you know, the economy from uh, the pandemic. So. I want to um, see yeah. what this means for healthcare. That's what I want to see. Right, 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 right. I'm not. Uh, we'll have to dig into the particulars or the the details, as you know. That's where the devil lives uh, in the details. So we'll definitely look at exactly what was done with healthcare taxes 
and climate control. But again, $750 billion aimed at uh, slowing down inflation. Uh, in other news, uh, men are facing sentencing for the hate crimes in the Maude Aubrey case. Again, the three gentlemen uh, who have been convicted uh, for the murder of Georgia man Maud Aubrey are now uh, awaiting their sentencing. Um, it does not say the possible um, time that they're looking at. They were supposed to get life. And they're pleading for them not to not. They're pleading for that to be peeled back. And they're also pleading to be put in a federal prison because they think they won't be safe in regular prison. So, um, yeah, I thought that was interesting that they are pleading for their lives now. Um, Oh, yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about about the details of that next uh, next uh, next show. Yeah. I'll I'll just say karma is a real thing. Yeah. Uh, in, in other news, uh, after a police officer sent a racist text, uh, speaking of karma being a real thing, uh, the town disbanded the entire police department. Uh, apparently, uh, a police officer in a Alabama, uh, Shelby County in Alabama, uh, sent out a very distasteful uh, joke, if you want to call it that. And uh, yeah, that led to uh, the the city disbanding the police department, uh, city councilman. Uh, Corey Abrams has said in in a um, meeting on Thursday, this has torn the community apart. It doesn't matter what color uh, we are as long as we do right by people. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, also uh, Lattimore, who is the assistant chief, excuse me, uh, said that the text was a, or appropriate action had been taken against the officer who alleged to have sent the text, uh, though at the time he would not name the person or anyone involved so uh yeah we'll have to look into that one to see uh what caused the whole shutdown of the of the the uh department that's what i want to know about yeah that's that's what we'll look up on wednesday and check it out in the meantime in the between time we got about two minutes left of the show time for the haps you know what it is time to talk about some of the things that's going on this week coming up and uh let us know about some things that you think is important as well things that are coming up as far as the haps are concerned we already talked about the whiz of course uh get your costumes ready that's why we're talking about it so early uh sunday august 28 2022 at 6 p.m at benson theater is going down the whiz costume jam we'll be singing in the aisles we'll be singing the songs we'll be dressing up and we'll be having a good time with the whiz so thanks for uh jade coming on and talking to us about that and uh, yeah, man, get get your costumes ready early. Let's let's get it going. Who I, I'm probably look for the mean, mean old lion costume. Who, who's gonna do? Who's gonna do what? Let's figure it out. It's going down. Also, uh, before we get out of here, too, just want to say, also at the Benson Theater, American Son is going down. Uh, it's this uh, by Christopher Christopher Demos Brown, directed by Kathy Tyree. is going to be a very 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 powerful play, and uh, I'm able to get some tickets away for this. So uh, those of you that want some tickets, hit me up in the in the uh, inbox. We'll see how many people we can get going. I would love to have a first guy, friends of first guy Omaha uh, crowd go on a specific day, so we can kind of show some numbers that uh, you know we're all getting together on the same time and checking it out. It starts on the 18th of August. Definitely check that out. There's another flyer the 18th through the 21st, and then of course the 25th through the 27th. Uh, you can go get tickets online. Or you can hit me up in the in the uh, inbox and let me know if you want some free tickets. Uh, the only requirement is you have to plan on going. Actually, Man. go. Don't just have the free tickets and then be like, nah, not going. You got to go. And I'd love for us to all try to go on a specific day. So let's try to coordinate that if we can. So uh, there you go. American Sun happening uh, August 18th, directed by the, the great Kathy Tyree and uh, a great, great local cast. Man, it's going to be an a epic event at the Benson Theater. So uh Definitely check it out. Let's get let's get it together and let's go. Let's what's Man, up. I, I get the sense that this is going to be a, a powerful one. I kind of feel like it's going to be a tearjerker a little bit. Man, it's a deep, 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 deep one for sure. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Uh, another one at the Culture House, man, happening Wednesday, August tenth. You definitely got to check that one out. Hip hop and R and B, how it should be done, is going down at the Culture House, thirty fourteen North Twenty Fourth Street, eight o'clock. As you can see, there's going to be cats from San, from uh, Kansas City, from Des Moines. Uh, our own Rhea Gold, Static Soul, Ty Gordo, a whole bunch of people going to be in the house. Hip hop and R and B, how it should be done at the Culture House, a River City function is happening Wednesday, August tenth. That's in uh, two days, 
So yeah, if you're ready to get your midweek funk on if you if you're ready to do that. And I really appreciate that. Also, uh, something else that we haven't been talking about enough: Afro Fest is coming September third, man. man. Uh, September third is happening at Stinson Park again, and uh, the, you know these they keep just growing and growing every year. So um, definitely check out the Afro Fest Omaha 2022 experience. Get your VIP tickets and hang out. Of uh, I go there just for the food, man. Just for the food alone. And the music, the food and the music is just all out of control, but it's just a beautiful thing to be able to walk around Stinson Park with so many, so many folks and, uh, and indulge in so many different African cultures there in one spot. It's uh, growing every year. AfroFest 2022 is starting Saturday, September 3rd. Get your tickets for that. <sighs> Lots going on. Lots going on. Yeah. And of course, we had, uh, t- we had uh, Miss Taylor on talk about a conversation with Tarana Burke that's happening also August 10th at 630 is going on at the Holland uh, uh, Omaha Performing Arts uh, and uh, the, she's got a special code now you can get tickets for 25 bucks so if you are down for that then definitely check out go to o, uh, OPA the Omaha Performing Arts page and uh, get your tickets for the conversation with Tarana Burke she's the one who started the Me Too movement use promo code Me Too. And get a discount on the tickets, and they're there uh, after that discount. They're only twenty five bucks, so definitely go check her out. Very important speaker coming to Omaha, Nebraska, and uh, it's worth uh, going to the Holland Center. She's you know she's that kind of that that caliber of a speaker. She's going to come to the Holland and speak. So that's what's up. So definitely check that out. That's brought to you by uh, the uh, Women, Women's Center for Advancement. And uh, yeah, definitely definitely check that out if you can. Uh, Tarana Burke conversation. At the Holland, brought to you by uh, OPA and the uh, Women's Center for Advancement. So definitely check that out. If you remember, we had Ms. Taylor on, uh, who is the uh, CEO and president of Women's Center for Advancement, talking about this talk coming up. This is it. It's happening on the 10th, which is in two days. Lots of stuff going on on Wednesday. So yeah, man. check that out. And uh, sorry, 903, any, any haps that I'm missing that you, you got over there, buddy? Uh well there was one in the the chat shout out to Rome's review Rome's review aka Mayor Sanchez would like to call him around here uh he says uh, Devin Devin my dude at the waiting room tonight uh so yeah if you're looking looking to step out tonight there is that uh so yeah yeah now, you know how popular Devin the dude is in Omaha man he can come man. To Omaha on a Monday night and sell out still still get down still, still get down, get so. down. So, yeah man yeah man big big shout out to to you know everyone. Uh, you know who's planning to go to that? Have a have a good time. Be safe. All that good stuff. Uh, and also, just big shout out to everybody, man, for tuning in. We appreciate y'all as always. We love and thank you. Uh, of course, it's Monday, so if you have any other haps uh, coming up, definitely dropping in uh, for later shows, and you know, we'll give you a shout out. Right on. Thanks for joining us, buddy. You got some words for the people. Uh, man, as always, we love and thank everyone. We appreciate all the chat chimers, all the ghost listeners, all the first and last time listeners, uh, just anyone who's uh, joining in on this experience, joining in on the conversation. Uh, we, we genuinely appreciate everyone. Uh, you make the show what it is. A big shout out to, to Jay Rogers, uh, House of Afros, Capes and Curls, uh, a.k.a. Uh, also the League of Extraordinary Negroes. Uh, definitely check them out. The link is in the chat. Um so, yeah, definitely uh, visit the website, get involved. A lot of events coming up, uh, not just, again, the Wiz event, but uh, don't forget AfroCon coming up in uh, early October. So definitely please show up, show out for that. Support, support, support. Uh, we need more things like that in the community. Uh, but without further ado, Paul B., take it away. Yo, yo. <clears throat> definitely going to go lay down after this. <laughs> COVID rest, still, please, please. COVID has still got me jacked up. Uh, thanks to everybody that reached out to me uh, that that offered to go to bring something by and everything else. I'm I'm really really appreciate you guys for doing that. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you coming onto the show as well and having these conversations for sure. Uh, I want to give thanks to the Umaha Tribe Elders for allowing us to be on this land and speak while we're here. I want to give a shout out to our elders for allowing us to speak before them, and I want to give a shout out to all of you, the chat chimers who come on who come on Monday, Wednesday, Friday with us all the time and uh, dig deep onto these subjects. And thanks to everybody who is a reoccurring member and sponsor of the channel as well. Thank you so much. If you're not, please go to firstguyomaha.com, hit the donate button, and uh, help us keep this conversation going. So I really appreciate it. Leah Keister says, keep all things up. Catch you on Wednesday. I appreciate that. Brooke says, good show. Thank you. Uh, Live long and prosper. That's what's happening. Let me see if I can get it right. There you go. (laughs) Live long and prosper. (laughs) Buddy, give me the double. Hit him with the double, though. Oh, Oh, check him out. Check him out. Talking about he ain't no star. He's a Star Wars cat. He's a Star Trekkie if I ever seen one. 
Pop says, uh, what a show. Thank you. Thank you guys. Love you. And uh and the and the first guy fam see you Wednesday. Thanks, Pops. Women's Wednesday coming up when you know it's your favorite day. Hey. Um, make sure we drop your track on your favorite day. Uh appreciate that. Also, Miss E says, wonderful show with important info and sweet memories. Thank you. Be good to yourselves. Drink water, keep your space, and guide your money. Love that. Thank you very much, Miss E, with the with the words of wisdom. And uh Brooke Brooke says, Is there no more Star Trek words of wisdom? We have to hit up Star Trek Rich and see about whether or not he's uh wants to continue the the uh tricky words of wisdom. Uh, yeah. we'll, we'll hit him up and see see what's going on there. But in the meantime, between time, appreciate all your words of wisdom. Thank you very much. I'm going to go take a nap. You guys have a good one. We'll see you Wednesday, where we'll be talking and politicking with P on Wednesday. You know, that's always hey. good. <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Baby, we got a lot to talk about. It's going down. We'll see you Wednesday. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. Peace. By the way, Van Lourdes. This is protected by the Red Dead.